Hello guys, in this video I will show you how you can run Windows GUI applications inside of a Docker container and also how you can display the GUI of the application you are running. If you want to know how to run Linux GUI applications inside of a Docker container, then you can check out my previous video, the link should be somewhere up there or down in the description. One use case why you would want to run a Windows application inside of a Docker container is that you're maybe thinking that the application may harm your system and you're more confident if it's running inside of a sandbox inside of a Docker container. So if you're not sure if the application is safe and if you should install it on your whole system, maybe you should try it out in a Docker container first and see if it's any good. Now probably you think that we will run Windows applications inside Windows containers, but the problem is that there is currently no way that I know of how to display the GUI of those applications when running in Windows containers. But this means the applications will run on Linux instead of Windows. This is not the same. Well, yes, we will run them using Wine, which is a compatibility layer that maps Windows system calls to Linux system calls, which means that applications are not emulated in any way, they should run basically native on Linux, and if you look at the progress that Wine has made the last few years with Linux Gaming and Steam Deck, I think Wine is a pretty good option if you want to run Windows applications on Linux. Of course, it's not the same as running on Windows, but it's the best we've got. I have prepared a few docker files, we will build the images from scratch, then we will start the containers, and then we will try to install the Windows applications inside of the containers, try to run the applications and see what we can do with it, if they are any good. As always, all the necessary links are in the description, as well as the docker files, and also down there you can find the timestamps, so you can skip any part of this video. The first docker file that I have prepared for you is alpine based, 32 bit, so it should be very lightweight and it should be fast. But since it's only 32-bit, you will only be able to run 32-bit Windows applications. Now I will briefly walk you through this docker file. First I'm setting two environment variables, the user and the password, and the name of the user will be test user, the password will be 1234. We will run the container as this user and we will not run it as root. Running a container as a root is a security risk, but also this password is a security risk as well, but we will take that risk. Then I'm installing a few packages and I'm also installing Vine, this version in particular, and I'm also installing Vine Tricks, and for Vine Tricks, at the time of recording, I still need the testing repository. So you will not find Vine Tricks inside the main repository yet. Why is Vine Tricks important? With Vine Tricks, you can easily install additional Windows packages that are maybe missing in this Vine installation. Like for instance, a newer .NET version if you need it. Otherwise, you would need to go to the Microsoft website, download the .NET version and install it manually. With Vine Tricks, this is just a one-liner. Then I'm installing two additional things. I'm installing Mono, which is a .NET replacement for Linux. Then I'm installing Gecko, which is needed if you want to run the Internet Explorer inside Vine. So yes, you can also run the old school Internet Explorer if you want. And then here I'm setting up the user and the password. And then, very important, I'm setting the display environment variable to host.docker.internal, which will resolve to the IP address of my host system, of my Windows system, because I will display the GUI on my Windows system. Then I'm just switching the user to this test user. And I'm just opening the bash shell, and that's it. Usually you would start a process here, but since we don't know what to start yet, because this is just a generic container, we will decide this afterwards. Now let's build the image, go to terminal, new terminal, make sure you're in the right folder, and write docker build dash f, the name of the docker file, which is in my case docker file dash alpine dash wine 32, then dash t, the name of the image, I'll call it docker dash wine 32, and a dot for the current folder, and enter build. This can take some time. The image is ready. Here it is in docker desktop. As you can see, it is a bigger one with 1.89 gigabytes. Before we start the container, we need to start an X server on Windows, because we will display the GUI of the application using an X server. And since Windows doesn't have an X server built in, we will need to use a third party tool. I will use VCX Surf, the download link is in the description, and I will launch it. This is it, I will just go with the defaults, next, 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 and finish. Now let's start the container, and this time we will not start it here in Docker Desktop, although we could do it but instead we will start it here in Visual Studio Code in PowerShell. To start the container just write docker run then dash it 
because you want to get an interactive terminal right here in PowerShell and then dash V. And I will map the same folder that I have here in Visual Studio Code. Just right click to copy and here right click to paste and then a colon. And I want to map this folder to the folder slash app inside the container. Now the Docker image that we want to run, which is docker-wine32. And the command or the process that we want to run, which is just simply bash. So this whole command will log in into the bash shell of the container. So let's try it out. Enter. And here it is. I'm logged in. So who am I? I'm the test user. That means I'm inside of the container. You can also see it here in Docker Desktop. So I'm inside this container right here. All right, let's make this terminal a bit bigger. Let's see if the mapped folder is here under slash app. Yes, it is. So the same content I see here, I can also see inside of the container. Now let's run some Windows applications. I mentioned you can run the Internet Explorer inside of the container. So let's try to do that first. To run the Internet Explorer, just write wine. And then inside the user's home directory, there is a dot wine folder. And inside this wine folder, there is a drive C folder. So this is drive C of my wine environment. This is not my Windows host drive C. Now in there should be program files and Internet Explorer. We should find the iExplorer.exe. Let's run this one. Enter. The first time you launch, you will see this wine window here. Just let it configure everything. By default, it opens wine HQ. So this one is running inside of a Docker container and it is displayed on Windows using an X server. So always start the X server previously, otherwise you will not get this window. All right, let's try Wikipedia. Down here in the terminal, you will see a lot of messages. As long as everything is working here, I think you can just ignore them. So here we are, Wikipedia. Let's go to English. In a previous video, I showed you how to run four web browsers inside of a Docker container. I compared the browser performance, but I did not cover this one. So if you're interested how to run Firefox or Chrome inside of a Docker container, you can check out my previous video. The link should be up there or down in the description. Let's see how this one performs. Similar as Firefox, I would say. You see this building up effect. Let's try YouTube. So you will not be able to run YouTube inside this browser, but you could use this for Googling and stuff. So much about Internet Explorer. Now let's try this use case where you find a program on the internet and you want to try it out, but you're not really sure if you should install it, if it's safe. So let's say I want an NFS client on Windows and I found this tool here. Here's the installer NFS client setup. Let's try it out in a Docker container first to see if this is the real deal or if it is fake. And by the way, if you want an NFS client on Windows, you don't need this tool. In a previous video, I showed you how you can set up an NFS client and also an NFS server on Windows. The link to the video should be up there or down in the description. I already downloaded the file and I placed it inside my Visual Studio Code folder. And this folder is also mapped to my container. So I can also access this file inside of the container. So let's install this one. Write wine and then the path to the file. Here it is. The X server is still running. So let's try this one out. Enter. All right, I get this installer. So let's try to install this one. Next, let's just go with the defaults. That's okay. Only 32 bit. That's okay. Do I want to download this one? I tried out this one previously and it didn't work when I pressed yes. And I will show you how you can install the C runtime using Wine Tricks afterwards. So let's go with no. All right, we are done. Close. So it installed here, that's okay. Installation complete and close. So the tool is installed, let's try to run it. So write wine and let's find the C drive where we installed it under program files, NFS client, NFS client exe. X server is still running, so let's try this one out. Enter. This is it, it seems that it works. If I would want to test this inside the container, then of course those two ports should be exposed. In my case, I didn't expose the ports explicitly, so I know this will not work. But looking at the application, it seems legit. So let's say I'm also confident enough to use this one also on my Windows host. So we are done here. Previously, as we installed the application, you saw that it prompted us to download the Visual Studio C++ 2013 distributables, and we skipped that step. Now I will show you how you can download and install this afterwards using Wine Tricks. 
So as I mentioned, Winetrix is really useful when you need to install some additional Windows components, Windows packages, like for instance the Visual C++ runtime. It is a one-liner, so you just need to write Winetrix and then the name of the package, which is in this case VC Run 2013. This command should download the package and start the installer. This means that you will get the install wizard, so make sure the X server is running when you execute this command. Let's try it out. Here it is, that's okay. And we are done. Winetrix also has a GUI, but therefore you will need to install a few more packages. I will quickly install them here. On Alpine you need those three packages. I will also add them here in the docker file. You can comment this line out if you don't need a GUI for Winetrix, but I will leave it in for now. Let's install those packages. And now we can run Winetrix and enter. Very simple UI, and now if you want to install additional packages, just select the default wine prefix and press OK. Would you like to help? Yes, thank you, well OK. Now here you can install fonts, you can edit the registry, you can run the task manager or run the explorer. Let's say I want to install a Windows package, then just select the first one and OK. And here you will get a big list of all those Windows packages that you can install, and down here you will also see the Visual C++ libraries that we already installed using the command line. So this is a really handy tool to have. Let's just go out of it. So far we only installed and executed 32-bit applications because we were limited by this Alpine 32-bit Docker image. I have also prepared a Docker file with a 64-bit image and it is basically the same as the previous one. I'm not doing anything fundamentally different here. The problem is I could not get any 64-bit application working with this one. Every application just crashed instantly. I know Alpine is very lightweight, so maybe I missed a package or two, I'm not really sure. You can find this Docker file also down in the description if you want to try it out yourself. Maybe you will have more luck with it. Also using Alpine 32-bit, you will quickly notice that some Windows applications just don't work. Always when using Alpine you have to keep in mind that it's very lightweight and probably it's missing a lot of those packages that other Docker images would have, like for instance the Ubuntu based image. So if the application works on this image, great, go with it, you will have the best experience and best performance. And you should be happy that it works. If it doesn't work here, then I have an alternative for you, this here, an Ubuntu based image. If it doesn't work on Alpine, then maybe it will work on Ubuntu. Because Ubuntu is in my opinion more, let's say, complete than Alpine. Of course this means the image will be bigger and the performance will be slower, but it's a good chance that it will work here if it doesn't work on Alpine. Now with this Ubuntu image here, you should be able to run 32-bit Windows applications and also 64-bit Windows applications. I'm saying should because I was not able to get 64-bit applications running with this one either. I actually think it is a Vine issue because I'm using the Vine staging version and not the stable version. Usually when you use Vine you go with the newest possible version and not really with the stable version because they're really good in fixing stuff in the newer versions. But somehow in this one I couldn't get 64-bit applications running. It is how it is. Let's just briefly go through this Docker file. I'm basically doing the same stuff as in the Alpine version. Here I'm setting the user and the password variables. Then I'm doing a lot of things just to get the newest Vine HQ staging version and Vine tricks. So as said, I'm not using the stable version here, but the staging version. Then if you need the Vine tricks GUI, I'm also installing Xenity. If you don't need a GUI, then just comment this line out. Then downloading Mono, installing, downloading Gecko and installing, adding the new user, setting the display environment variable. And then if you want to force 32 bits, you can uncomment these two lines and then the Vine environment should be pure 32-bit. I will leave it commented out. Then I'm switching the user to the test user and I'm just starting the bash shell. And that's it, basically same procedure as with the previous Alpine version. And that's it for this video. You can find the Docker files down in the description. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, then give a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. I very appreciate it. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.